I'm going to give uh, an informal little webinar. So yeah, we, we are iconoclasts because we're changing a bit the way we look at things, namely, you know, whether things are symmetric and, and mapping to symmetry on the hoof. Um, and also, you know, the pool of the deep digital flexor tendon that will come, um, you know, the, the, soul, the soul plane and other things. Uh, so I'm going to just give a little example here. And this is a horse we did in uh, September. The feet were very deformed and it was barefoot. And then we helped it with first correct trimming. And there's a lot of things that are going to be interesting about this case study that I will expand about um, later in different webinars. So we did the, the Tandy boots, which we are using also to look at locomotion. I'm not going to go in detail with that, but that's very useful. So before and after, after uh, showing, you can see the difference, okay? Um, so, you know, I, I don't think you can fix anything, fix f permanently. I think it's a question of give and take, you know, and, and get to a better, um, better balance, you know, for the time being, because things always change. But uh, everything, with, especially with locomotion, anything that has to do with dynamic system, it's kind of like peeling an onion. You know, it's not like all of a sudden you put a certain shoe on and it's going to work forever. Uh, the trimming has a lot to do with it. The way person, a person rides a horse has a lot to do with it. You know, uh, horses are aging. Uh, there's a, you know, they have injuries. So it's never just one thing. So just as an example, now we'll be talking about material science and biomaterial. So this is a horse that is coming from being shod into being barefoot. Um, I want to warn everyone, it doesn't always happen when you remove a metal shoe that you have such a, a different foot, okay? A metal doesn't match the behavior of the keratin. It has nothing to do with the barefoot movement. That's a fact. From, from material science and learning about biomaterial. But you can see how the foot is actually is having a very different shape. And you have also compressed tubules because probably the shoe wasn't placed correctly. Um, so you, you, you will create problem in, in the wall and other area. So again, it does not just happen with metal shod horses. This is a barefoot horse. And it's very interesting to see how this white pigmentation in the wall was actually pushed by improper trimming. If you were to add a metal shoe that is not placed correctly, it probably would even be worse. So again, it's not black and white, and I'm not trying to point finger or who does the worst, the worst uh, job. You know, it really depends, and it's like everything. I prefer to work with something that is closer to the mechanical property of the horn but you could still have problem when you when you do some barefoot work or you put a composite shoe, you can also still create problem. So what's very important, it's the same hoof that was barefoot. You see, when you, you do not have a good arch, and we will talk about the sole arch and the position of the sole arch as it relates to be under the bony column or not, will affect actually the stance. And when people talk about postural uh, readjustment and help, well, I think the first thing you should see is how, what, what, what is the shape of, of the soul? Not my soul. What is the shape? My shape the shape of my soul is, I don't know, iffy. Uh, <laughs> but your, your, your really stance is very important where the, the foot is under the bony column and what is the arch doing, okay? And you cannot make an arch. I think it comes to a point like, you know, the arch is kind of matching a little bit the shape of the pedal bone. So there'll be more on this topic. I will also mention also a little more dwell into lever arm, especially when it comes down to bones that are not symmetric. It's not the straight line, can't be a straight line. Again, people should figure out whether the foot is standing on the bony column or not, okay? So it's very important to measure things correctly. That's the horse that come, you know, with the, the feet problem and I was twisted. That heel to bulb distance is definitely inadequate. I was pre-trimming. So it sounds counterintuitive to actually lower the heel. As you lower the heel, you can take more toe. So this is also medial lateral. And you can tell this is, this is the foot is actually shearing, shearing to the medial side for, for a right foot. It's not exactly good. So you have to be really careful. And that's why I trim in three dimension and understanding things are not 
symmetric and I project the articulation, the articulation of of that specific foot into, I mean, bone into into the sole. Okay, and that I will go in detail with with it later. So uh, in our software, you can actually deform a capsule and see what what it's doing and not doing. Okay, so the thing is, when you have a very distorted hoof and some problem, you do not know how it's going to evolve. So you better be zen when you 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 deal with hooves. There's no absolute in the in this equation, but as as the foot expands, you say it would be contracted. So does the sole expand? So you start removing things when things are not ready. You can make a horse extremely sore. Okay, so with the first trim on this horse, I had really. Um, uh, deviated uh, capsule, uh, there's very little trimming, you know, we just, just did what we could, because the sole was not so thick, so we just, mm -hmm. as it relates to the articulation, projected in, 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 a, in a 3D form, okay? So that's what we, we were doing. And I will go in detail with all this trimming method. It's not a method, it's an approach, by the way, because every hoof is different. And palpating that, it's actually going after the real anatomy of that hoof at that time. And it helps you also looking on how things have deviated from the bone. So this is the same hoof, uh, the same day before and after trimming. Uh, we look at the heel, heel frog junction. I don't try to make them exactly the same the same lengths because you have to be very careful. You have two different angles, the medial wall being a little steeper than the lateral, so you, you have to think, and you have to be careful how much frog you can take safely at that time. So again, there are no methods, you know, and it's per whole, per situation. So again, that's before and after. The position of the um, sensor process is much better after than before. And that's done through the trim. It's a very minimal trim, uh, not, 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 not too much of uh, exaggeration. I'm not trying to shim, shove, and, and, and I'm just trying to find an average, okay? So same thing, this is after the first showing. Um, you know, we kind of managed to derotate the capsule. The shoe placement, again, very important. Shoe placement, the best you can at that time, will be located to this this articulation projected onto the sole, and then we'll see how much more we can actually add to help a little bit, but I never ever pass the plumb line from the coronary band. We're not trying to do trailers, we're not trying to do anything weird. Um, so this is just the right front for the first time. And, um, you know, again, the trimming, the left front, the, the, the trimming is, is, is everything. And then the positioning of the shoe, this is why actually I use glue at the bottom so I can slide the shoe where those points are, not where, you know, things are distorted. And I will go in detail with that later. So, and that's the other foot. And uh, this is the left front. It's not as extreme. So we're, we're getting, I'm not trying to have the same length. I'm just trying to have a, a more of a better medium, okay? So this is the left front after. Note again the position of uh, the extensor process. So you can see again before, and you can see the length of the of the of the heel, and then you can change that. And uh, the, the, it's interesting because when it was actually completely shifted and rotated, actually the medial to lateral uh, wall angle is is almost perfect, but that's actually not what this foot needs. Same thing here. See now we have closer, closer lengths. Again, it's yeah, lateral will be slightly appearing slightly longer because you, you have a different angle, so you have to be a little bit careful with that. Um, and that would be probably be a little more normal because you you have the the medial side being a little steeper than the lateral. So this is recent, recently. It's a, a month later, um, and you can tell. Just the foot now, it's, it's, it's locomoting much better. And um, you can see the difference, right? Things do not change overnight when you give support to the, to the sole arch and you place okay. it where the articulation is projected onto, onto the sole. You can only do so much at one time without creating huge trailer. Again, we do not pass the coronary band projected to the side here. 
Um, so, you know, it's a give and take. And, and the horse also, the muscle and everything change. So you, you can't just make assumption of where it's going to go a month later. You have to repeat and, and, and continue your, your, your trimming in the correct way. But you can tell it's a huge difference than before when the foot was completely sheared out. So we, we still would like to have a little more here than here, but it's improving compared to, to the first time. So, and it's after shoe placement and we're getting a little bit better. And, um, you know, it's going to take time because of the capsule has to morph itself correctly. It has, it is self adaptive, uh, because of foot sink, it's skin. So it, I will go into that later. So again, the, the, the right front still has a little shifting. It's better than before, but I, as you, as you put the shoe placement, you're, you're helping a lot. Okay. And I'm putting the shoe in the right place. So the foot itself by itself cannot not have support. Eventually we'll, we'll hopefully maybe be capable of keeping it barefoot at some point, maybe not the hind definitely. Right now it's shot, this horse is shot on all four for a little while. All right. So that, that, that left front kind of, kind of self-corrected it much faster. So we're, we're on the mend, but it takes a year for, for a whole capsule to morph itself into another healthier capsule and i don't think you can make assumption how, how how it's going to change because it's it's a factor of motion you know muscle uh, neurology everything so again it's very, i think it's a very elegant way to deal with problem is to palpate that and and see what the capsule is doing as it relates to the bone okay and not go too crazy in terms of double guessing how the horse should move not move okay so I have done enough research on, on this. It's published, you know, so asymmetry, asymmetry of the, of the bones while continuing and finishing my work right now on, on a, a large set of bones. I'll submit a paper soon. Um, so that's that.